Alrighty guys, it is your boy back with another killer template on a Sunday no less. It is beautiful and sunny outside, but instead I'm in here delivering some value for you guys. Now, this template is not for everyone. It is for the refined among us who are the power users of AI and specifically use AI in various parts of our business or our life. And we have gone through an experience where we are reusing prompts or we are refining prompts or anything like this. And if you've been using AI for any amount of time, you've probably realized that the quality of your prompt determines the quality of your output. And so there's a lot of effort which now gets put into building up the prompt, even like meta prompting, using AI to create the prompt, to give back to AI, to get your outcome, that I have built a system to help organize all of this because I was getting so lost in all of my different projects across all my different apps, trying to figure out, was I using ChatGPT when I prompted about that? And like going through and all of the chats are automatically named so they don't stick in my head as like exactly what they are. I've spent five to 10 minutes sometimes trying to like find that Genesis prompt that I used that I know I had somewhere that I need to redo this thing. So what I've done is I've built a template specifically for organizing prompts and remembering where these prompts have been generated, where they've been used, and then also make it very easy to copy because the other thing that just pisses me off about some LLMs, specifically Claude, is if I get a prompt and I paste it in, sometimes when I'm copying it back out or I'm using it again, it just removes all of my formatting. And if I need to make any adjustments to that prompt, well, I have to go and reformat the whole thing, which takes another few minutes. All of this, is coming from a point of privilege, guys. We are now only a few years into this whole AI revolution and already we have come to be so complacent with all of the amazing stuff that we have. So this is just a quality of life hack that I have built for the power users of AI. And so what I wanna do is walk you guys through this template quickly. It's not that complicated, but just show you how I've built this thing. I've got it now on my website, so if you guys want to get it, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you can see the way that I've put this thing together and you can very well just build your own. So let's take a look. As with all my templates, if you are scrolling on this left navigation panel, you'll see here that we have system, and this is going to be where all of the core databases are. So this is a good central place to make changes if you want to affect all of the linked databases, because all of these here are representing linked databases. Now. To get started, let's just make a new prompt and we're going to say YouTube video analysis, right? And do we want to favorite this? Sure, why not? And if you come down here to prompt type, you'll see that we have a few different options. This is basically just to organize what the output is going to be. So if we're doing an analysis, the output is going to be written. So we put writing. Uh, complexity level, we can say meta recursive. We'll basically use AI to make this prompt for us. Function category, well, it's not creative generation. It's not content transformation. It's more kind of analysis, right? So we just put that there. And if you click down on these properties here as well, you can see we have the option to link a few things. So I always like to link the AI model as well. So this is the model that I am using this prompt with. So. I would probably do the analysis with Sonnet. And obviously you can add more models in here. These are just like the ones that I use. And if you come to knowledge, you see that we have the option to add this page. And we'll look at knowledge in a second. But what this is, is that within Claude specifically, you can actually have project knowledge within each of your project groups. And this is information that Claude will reference every time you're prompting it. Within the prompt itself, you're gonna have an instruction, but then you can have like broader context, which you attach onto that. I'm gonna assume if you're watching this video and you're interested in this template, you already understand all of that stuff. So not too complicated. And then we also have this option here to add a project. This is just the project that the prompt is relating to. So for example, this could be Thorn Labs, or it could be a new one. We could say we have a new project called Notion operator which is another little app that i'm building and we can click new and then that's going to add that to that project great and now this is where the magic happens so this is where you actually will paste your prompt and you can see that i've put this inside a notion code block and i've selected markdown as the text here so to just demonstrate this quickly we're just going to come to an existing prompt here my social media prompt for example and you can see that within this code box, everything gets nicely organized and formatted in a very easy to read and very easy to adjust 
format. And the benefit of this as well is you've just got a single button here to copy. This for me is like the biggest game changer because a lot of the guys that I've seen organizing their prompts, they have these notion pages and it's all just like text and it's, it's, it's kind of messy. So this is like a very beautiful, clean way to organize it. And pro tip, when you're actually using AI to help you make prompts, always ask it to give you the prompts in raw markdown format. And that way all of this will get like properly organized and highlighted and formatted in markdown. So we can just copy this. And if we come back to the one we've just made here, if we paste that in, voila, you're gonna see it's all nice and clean. I like things to like look good, not only be functional. So I'm very happy with that. All right, so let's scroll down a little bit more. You can see that we did actually favorite this prompt. So it's popped up under our favorites list. And so you can see that we have the project we've just created here. And then if you were to come back to prompts and you organize by projects, you can see that the prompt we've just made is now under this Notion Operator Projects category. So if you've got a lot of projects going on or you're running multiple businesses, this is a very helpful way for you to keep things organized because it's very likely the case that you have your social media script for one project. So this is my one for Thorn Labs. But say if I am making personal content or something for another project, I'm going to want this, but I'm going to want it to be slightly adjusted because here you can see it's talking about specializing in AI powered workflows and for artists and musicians, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't really want that to be the instruction when I'm doing content for a different project. So I'm going to need to make that tweak. And this speaks to the entire point of this template because I don't want to have to go into a chat and try and copy a prompt from the top of the chat and then put it into another chat and make these changes and do these things. It's just messy and it's just like a very poor way of getting high quality output, but also just keeping your mind space clear. So moving on, areas is just another way of organizing and viewing information. This comes from Tiago Forte's second brain concept, wherein they are like non-ending areas, categories, places where you can just link things. And then if you were to come to marketing, you're going to see, okay, these are all of the different prompts that we've got relating to marketing and pretty self-explanatory. You don't have to use it. It's there if you want to. It just can be helpful if you're getting a lot of prompts cooking. And then of course, if you need resources, these are all down here. But I just want to quickly jump into a few of the other navigation pages that we have just to show you what else we've got. And the next one is going to be keywords. So this is more specific for visual prompting. If you are creating mid journey prompts or whatever, and you're looking to get a lot of specificity around creating a particular style or whatever the case, it can be helpful to have some keywords to reference. And so if we're looking in the abstract keyword category, you can see, okay, soft gradient is typically a thing that you find in abstract artwork. And here you can see a description for what that is. Now, you can also just grab this description and build your prompt out by using this or give this to the AI when, it's, when you're asking it to make the prompt for you. That's all well and good. And so I've just created these keywords as just a way to open the landscape of possibilities a little bit more. And it took me quite some time to build all these out. So I do hope you make use of them. You don't have to, obviously, but they're there if you want to. And of course, I encourage you to add and make your own. And the next thing that we've got here is references. Now references in my mind is just about people or styles. Maybe it's a director, maybe it's a photographer, maybe it's an artist. And it can be very helpful to give one of these as a reference in your prompt to help your AI understand exactly what you're trying to create. And I've only put a few in here just to show you what this is. But what I encourage you to do is you are going to have directors or artists or photographers or designers that you look up to or that you like, add them in here and even add some imagery and stuff like this as well to just show what's possible. And so that way, when you're building things out, you can, yeah, have some better references and some things and just build like a database. Think about it like Pokemon style, where you've got a huge bank of inspiration to draw from. So if you're dealing with clients and you're trying to find something, you can come here and say, okay, who's a photographer that's contemporary? Okay, we get Annie, we chuck her in with this whole thing. But again, it's just in there if you guys want to use it. And the final thing that I want to touch on is the subscriptions, which is keeping track of everything that you're actually spending your money on. So the reason that I've put this in here is because I have found myself signing up for a lot of different services and apps recently. 
specifically around AI, because it seems like there's all of these different AI models now focusing on very specific things, especially with regard to video and photo generation. And it was getting pretty intense because I was just finding all of these subscriptions that were just like rolling over and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm not even using that one anymore. I just use that for two hours the other month. And so you can obviously use this for other things, your Notion subscriptions, your Spotify, Netflix, whatever. And you can even drag it into a different part of your workspace. But I find that this is extremely important to have to just stay on top of what's going on. And the way that I personally do it is I set like a cap. Okay, I'm not allowed to spend more than 600 bucks a month on subscriptions. Subscriptions, I'm having problems saying that today. And if I do want to bring another one in, I have to unsubscribe for one. And so that way I'm like keeping things a little bit under control because it can get a little bit out of hand. And I'm sure it's only going to get worse as there's like more and more apps popping up, especially with vibe coding now. There's going to be so many people making stuff. All right, so this is the Prompt OS template. And as I mentioned, you guys are welcome to build something like this yourself. I've taken you through all of the different pieces so you can piece it together for yourself or you're welcome to support an independent creator and you can get it on my website, also totally fine. And honestly, this is the template that I am using the most at the moment, this and the content template, because I'm just finding myself prompting a lot of stuff and I'm really getting into trying to refine these prompts. So I'm getting like max value out of my AI usage. Now, the final thing that I want to show you guys, which goes beyond the scope of this video, but I just want to give you guys a little taste of what's possible, is this thing called an MCP server. So this is a model context protocol, which is a way that you can connect an LLM to an app and control an app using AI, right? And so Claude and ChatGPT both offer this. There's still a few creases getting ironed out and a couple things to be aware of, which I'll touch on in a second. but. In short, it can come into your app, it can read things, it can even create things. You can ask it to make you databases and add entries, which is quite crazy. And it's able to do stuff for you. So before I started this video, I just had this idea. I'm like, hey, I can use an MCP, MCP server for this. So I gave it a go and it actually worked. So I just want to quickly show you guys this here. And so I opened Claude and I said, hey, Use my social media script and Notion Prompt OS template to make a script for the following idea. The five things I learned making music every day for one year. Now, just to show you what this looks like, as you can see inside of Claude, I've got Notion, I've created an integration in Notion and I've connected Claude to it. And then within this template here, I've also added the connection to this MCP. So this is connecting Claude specifically with this page, right? Again, I'm gonna make a whole video on this, so I'm not gonna to get too into the weeds about that. But I, I sent this prompt off to see what it would do, and it cooked for a while, and it definitely took a lot longer than just copying the prompt and pasting it in, but it ended up finding the script, and then it delivered the script. So you can see here that based on the format of my short form social media scripts, which is all laid out here, it's referenced that, and it's created me a short form content script. Now, this isn't the way that I use the MCP server in Notion the most. I'm gonna show you guys that in a different video, as I've said several times now, but I just thought that this was like a cool thing to just touch on because it now means that you can reference your prompts. You don't necessarily have to like open Notion and copy and drag them in. But as mentioned, it can take a little bit of time to find everything and get it going. So it is still technically faster to just copy it in, but I'm sure that this is all gonna speed up and improve with time. And so if you've got any questions, flick me an email, drop me a message, drop a comment, whatever it is. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.